Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel for a new military video. The today argument is attack helicopters and specifically the difference between the three Russian attack helicopters, the Mi-24, Mi-28 and the Ka-52. In this video we'll check the info about these three machines and try to find out what they have in common and where they differ. But let's go in order and start with the Mi-24. It has a crew of two sitting tandem plus the space for eight and up to 12 passengers. It's been produced from 1972 with a cost of 16 million dollars. The latest upgrade, the Mi-24 VM, was introduced in 2015. You can also find this helicopter named by Mi-35. It's the same machine but with the export name. It has an empty weight of 8,350 kg and a maximum takeoff weight of 11,500 kg. For the engines we can find two turboshaft with a total power of 4,400 HP. It can reach a maximum speed of 315 km per hour, a cruise speed of 260 km per hour, a rate of climb of 15 meters per second, a combat range of 460 km with a ferry range of 1,000 km. The service sailing is 5,400 meters. Let's now check the Mi-28. It has a crew of two sitting tandem, but we don't have the space for the passengers. It's been produced from 2006, so it's much newer, with a cost of 18 million dollars, so it's a little bit more expensive. The latest upgrade, the Mi-28 NM, was introduced in 2016. It has an empty weight of 7,900 kg, with a maximum takeoff weight of 11,700 kg. For the engines we can find the same adopted for the Mi-24 with, of course, again the same amount of HP. It can reach a maximum speed of 320 km per hour, a cruise speed of 270 km per hour, a rate of climb of 13.7 meters per second, a combat range of 440 km and a ferry range of 1,000 100 km. The service sailing is 5,800 meters. In this case we can notice how the Mi-28 has similar performance compared to the Mi-24. But now let's check the Ka-52 to see if something changes. The Ka-52 has a crew of two sit side by side, so this is the first difference. They are not in tandem like the previous two helicopters, but one next to each other. It's been produced from 1990 with the first version, the Ka-50, that was a single pilot one, with a cost of 20 million dollars. The latest upgrade, the Ka-52K, was introduced in 2015. It has an empty weight of 7,700 kg and a maximum takeoff weight of 10,800 kg. For the engines we can find two turboshaft engines with a total power of 4,800 HP. It can reach a maximum speed of 315 km per hour, a cruise speed of 270 km per hour, rate of climb of 16 meters per second, a combat range of 520 km per hour and a ferry range of 1,200 km. The service ceiling is 5,500 meters. In this first section of the video we can notice how these three machines are not so different between each other. The main difference we can notice is probably the passengers for the Mi-24, that may be an interesting feature that the other two don't have, and also the crew sit side by side of the Ka-52, that is also something that you usually don't find in other attack helicopters. While if we check the maximum takeoff weight or the performance, such as the maximum speed, rate of climb, combat range, here we don't find a really big difference. So why we need three attack helicopters? Maybe in the next sections we can find out the answer. In this section we analyze the protections and avionics of these three machines. As usual, let's start with the Mi-24. For the protections we can find an armor to withstand caliber 23mm, a radar, laser and missile warning, an infrared jammer, flare and chaff dispensers. We do not find bulletproof glass, just like many other attack helicopters. I know it's weird, but it's true. While for the avionics we can find a target tracker, observation system, thermal image guidance, night vision optics and a Doppler navigation. For the Mi-28 we can finally start noticing something different. The armor is able to withstand caliber 23mm, we can find a full automatic warning system, radar warning, radar interferometer, laser and missile warning, infrared jammer, platan jammer, a parachute escape system, they can open the side doors and escape with a parachute, 
flare and shaft dispenser mounted on the wing pots. In this case we do have a bullet proof glass that can withstand 7.62 mm standard bullet, 12.7 mm armor piercing and even 20 mm high explosive fragmentation. This is exactly what you call a flying tank. For the avionics we can find a target tracker for both air and land, so it can also track air targets such as other helicopters or even airplane. A third generation FLIR, image processing, sight system, Doppler navigation and another very powerful radar that can be mounted on the top of the main rotor, call it MAST. In this case we can already notice something quite different between the MI-24 and the MI-28, but let's check what we have for the KV-52. It has an armor to withstand caliber 23mm, a coaxial rotor that is quite different compared to the other helicopters in general because in this case we do not have the tail rotor. That is a quite interesting advantage, especially because the tail rotor is one of the most vulnerable part of the helicopter, but also the sound of the helicopter is reduced. In fact it is very interesting how most of the helicopter noise comes from the back rotor. You may think that being smaller compared to the main rotor is uh, more silent, but actually is not. That's why many modern attack helicopters have a double blade back rotor, because making them counter rotating they reduce the sound of the back rotor and even the main rotor is counter rotating, reducing the noise emitted. Then we can also find ejector seats like the one you can usually see on fighters, they work the same way, but just before the ejection the rotor blades disconnect thanks to little charges. Everything else works just like for the fighters. Then we can find radar warning receiver, radar interferometer, laser and missile warning receivers, infrared jammers, platan jammers, anti-electronic warfare system, flare and chaff dispensers on the wing pods just like for the MI-28 and also in this case we can find the bullet proof glass up to 7.62 mm. For the avionics we can find a target tracker for air and land, a third generation FLIR, image processing, radio locator, sight system, Doppler navigation, a ESA radar, active electronic scanned array radar, the Arbalet e radar mounted in the nose of the helicopter that is something more similar to an airplane radar compared to the other helicopters and then the Zanet UAV control that is needed to control other UAVs. UAV stands for Unmanned Area Vehicles, you should probably know about them. In this second category we have an evolution in terms of avionics from the MI-24 up to the KF-52, but also for the protections we can notice a song. Thing. The MI-28 is the most armored helicopter among them, it's really a flying tank, while the KF-52 adopts different kind of countermeasures for the self-protection and uh, to save the crew in case of problems we have ejector seats. And from here we can already start to deduce how the KE-52 is like a commander that can stay away from the enemy lines and command the infantry such as the MI-28 and MI-24. But we still have to check the last category of this video. As usual let's start with the MI-24. For the guns we can find a 23mm twin barrel cannon under the nose and optionally two 23mm guns in gun pods under the wings. But keep in mind that under the wings we have only four pylons, so if we add two gun pods of course we have the space for only two rocket launchers, two missiles and so on. For the rockets we have two possibilities, 20-80mm rockets in each rocket launcher with a maximum of four as we said before or five 122mm rockets in each rocket launcher, again with a maximum of four. While for the missiles we can find anti-tank guided missiles or anti-air missiles. In case of the anti-tank guided missiles they are packed in a pair, so we can find two of them for each launcher and a total of four. It's the same for the Aigla 1V anti-air missiles, while for the R-73N anti-air missiles we have only four of them, so we can have one missile for each pylon. Then we can also find a maximum of four 250 kg bombs on the inner pylons because of the weight and the mine dispenser pots. What about the MI-28? We can find a 30mm cannon under the nose, 
and the optionally 23mm guns, the same we have seen for the Mi-24, but in this case we can have up to 4 of them. Also for the Mi-28 we have only 4 pylons, so again we can have a maximum of 4 of the weapons we will see now in the list. Also for the Mi-28 we can find 20 80mm rockets for each rocket launcher, or 5 122mm for each rocket launcher and a maximum of 4 for both of them. For the missiles, also here we can find anti-tank guided missiles and anti-air missiles, but they are slightly different. In fact, in this case we can find a pack of 8 anti-tank guided missiles with a maximum of 2 of them, connected to the inner pylons because of the weight, a pair of Aigla 1V anti-air missiles, again for a maximum of 2 of them under the wings, or 4 R-73 and Vimpel anti-air missiles. Also for this one we can also find two 500 kg bombs or mine dispenser pods. While for the KA-52 the list is slightly longer. We have a 30mm cannon, in this case is not mounted under the nose, but is connected on the side and it's semi-rigid for an Iger precision. But also for this one we can find optionally four 23mm guns in the pods under the wings. For the KA-52 we have six pylons in this case, so we can get more weapons. We have a mix of rockets, 80mm and 20 of them for each rocket launcher, or 122mm and five of them in each rocket launcher, just like before. For the missiles we have anti-tank guided missiles, anti-air missiles, anti-ship missiles and air to ground missiles. I think now you already know how it works but we can have a pack of six anti-tank guided missiles and a maximum of two of them under the pylons or six R-73N anti-air missiles, one for each pylon or four KH-25 air to surface missiles or only two harm missiles because they are heavier so they can be connected only on the inner pylons and of course also for this one we can also find the two 500 kg bombs, mine dispenser pods and the UAV dispenser pods. And if you are curious about the range of each of these weapons, here we have a list. We can find a range of 2500 meters for most of the guns, except for the KA-52 gun that has a range of 4000 meters. For the rockets we can find 4500 meters for the SA-8 and 6000 meters for the S-13. And what about the missiles? Well, we start from 4000 meters or 4 kilometers as the shortest range for an anti-tank guided missile up to 300 kilometers for the longest range. These are real cruise missiles adopted against ships, fortifications, bases, anything that is very 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 far away from the helicopter. So now that we have checked all the info about today's three machines, can you guess why we have three of them? The easiest answer is because they have different roles. We have the Mi-24 that is a gunship, can transport troops and can be adopted for different kind of missions. Then we have the Mi-28 that is a flying tank, is much more armored, more suitable for a close combat range and be very close to the enemy lines. And then we have the Ka-52 that is the most advanced among them, with the best avionics, radar, longest range, but it's less armored and even though it has a very good amount of weapons, is more suitable for commanding the other helicopters, troops, tanks and all, attacking from a further distance thanks to the very long range. And what's about you? Do you like these machines? Do you have a favorite one? Was this video helpful to understand the difference between the three machines we have seen today? If yes, remember to leave a comment and let me know about it. Leave a like if you liked the video. Remember that in the caption of the video or the right up corner there is the playlist with all my other videos like this one, so if you like this kind of video you can check also the others. And if you have any suggestion for the next video to improve or as the argument for it, let me know in the comments. And as usual, see you next week in a new video. Bye!